All right, so the meeting where it was widely expected, the, the, the highly anticipated meeting, where it was widely expected that there would be nothing different uh, from previous meetings, came and went today. And, and there was a, a significant difference, at least to the market standpoint, in terms of higher inflation forecasts, official forecasts from the Fed, uh, as well as uh, um, higher growth forecasts. Um, uh, so that, that started to ramp up um, taper expectations on what the Fed can do. So we're gonna break down the ramifications of that uh, and then whether or not that's translated into a broader risk move in terms of risk aversion or risk appetite based on all these technical indicators, what may be happening here in the after hours as, we, as we're recording this video, and then what to watch for tomorrow morning as we open. So I'm gonna talk about you know, what kind of move might precipitate more of an exhale uh, versus you know, what might actually just end up being much to do about nothing. Um, by the time all is said and done, and we might, we'll still continue this grind. So I'm going to break that down. Our trade idea of the day is a stock uh, in, a, in a sector that, that had, has kind of had a previous breakout to a new bullish run uh, that, that then had an exhale. And now today, despite all of this is happening, looks like we've resumed uh, that breakout move. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to trade that. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Today is Wednesday, June the 16th, 2021. This is the Market Outlook from MarketScholars.com. My name is David Settle. All right, well, let's start off taking a look at the S&P 500 with the Market Forecast Indicator. As you can see, uh, the down day, we actually had a down day going into the FOMC meeting um, and we came off of the lows uh, coming out of it, uh, had made new lows uh, right after it and obviously came off of it. Uh, so far in the after hours, actually back down to those same lows. So we'll see how things open up tomorrow morning. Uh, but it's still closing below three days of lows there, uh, even with the rally. So bearish from that perspective. Uh, now, keep in mind that the near-term line did dip below 50. It hasn't dipped below 40. So, you know, it's dropped out of the bullish zone. Um, you know, it's setting up for a bullish uh, near-term low point. The last near-term low was right there. Uh, so we pretty much almost, you know, at the lows of the day today, if you look at, like, how much of this last, of this little near-term rally um, of that last near-term rally we retraced, we were down to the Fibonacci retracement zone at the lows. We closed at the top of the retracement zone. So it kind of show, goes to show just how quickly uh, we've erased, that you can erase. I mean, we, were, we erased, what, four days worth of move in one, uh, in one day today, uh, three days worth of gains. So um, that's, that's the nature of uh, drops versus rallies. Uh, just like that. So we'll see if tomorrow we follow through with that or not, um, with, with the near-term line dropping. As of right now, that's not a bullish or bearish pattern at all. In fact, it's still ac actually pretty bullish because you would expect that we'll bounce off that support and head higher uh, and bounce from, from being below 50 up to a new, new run. I mean, that was a good, long, typical run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight days with the intermediate line or near term line above 50 of a typical seven to 12 day rally uh, for the near term rally. So, not too, not too crazy here. And of course, when you draw, draw all the way back out uh, to the current intermediate run that we're on, the black Fibonacci lines, we're nowhere near the 23% retracement. Uh, and if you notice, we could come down here to this 262% uh, retracement level and still of the current near-term rally and still not we could we could hit these old lows from mid-may and still not be um to you know hitting that 23 percent retracement level and if we did we would be well below if we hit these old lows from in may we would be well below this you know two and a half percent mark of being below the 30-day moving average which is you know a sign of an intermediate decline um and still wouldn't be uh below uh, the 4015 mark, which would be the level that we would be breaking, you know, and actually starting an intermediate pullback. Again, it goes to show that when you take big inhales, the exhales are bigger too. Uh, and not because, not that they're more bearish, they're just normal exhales. They just are bigger because the inhale is bigger. It's all relative, right? There's, you can't compare. Uh, that's why it's such a very poor thing to do to say, that all 10% moves are corrections or all 20% moves are bear markets because not all 10% moves uh, are the same, right? A 10% drop after a 10% rally is a 100% decline. That's a very significant 10%, that's more than a correction. 
But a 10% drop after a 100% rally, which is kind of what we're on coming off of this uh, market sentiment. And really, you know, coming off of this a low point here, you know, all the way up to the high, you know, that is, oh, excuse me, I need to do the, here, let me get this drawn here. So a 10% drop, sorry, off of here, nope. A 10% drop coming off of that low up to the high would be a 31% rally. A 10% drop off of a 31% rally is not really that big of a deal either. Um, you know, so it's all about context. All about context in terms of you know what the what the exhales look like. It's all relative to the previous inhale. Um, and so, like I said, we would you would come down the 38.65 here. Now, if we did come down the 3865, just to kind of give you some perspective. So if we came down the 3865 from the high point, we just hit a 4257, that would be a 9% a drop. And that would be a normal exhale for this intermediate level. And then of course, for the long term drop, you know, getting that would only be that would still be inside a 23%. I mean, so that's still from a long term perspective would just be noise, even though it would be a intermediate decline down to a support level. So again, not all 10% and 20% drops are the same. Uh, it's all, that's why Fibonacci lines are perfect because it puts the moves in context, right? 38% move is 38% no matter what, depending upon you know, how big these lines are drawn from. And, and, and this is a long, long term run that we've been on, uh, on that, that the SPX has been on uh, for so long here. Uh, so if you look at the NASDAQ, a little bit different story here. Uh, let's take a look at that one, and you can see that the NASDAQ uh, didn't quite close below the last three days lows, but it did close below yesterday's lows, uh, obviously well off of the the, the uh, lows of the day. Uh, the near-term line, same thing, dropped below 50. The momentum line for both of these uh, bouncing up because of the move off of the lows. And then the Russell 2000 didn't have very much of a range at all, uh, at all here. Uh, and the near-term line has been below 50 this entire time. In fact, it was briefly above 50 for just a day uh, and is already back down. So it's now it's not below 40. We're not like in bearish territory, um, you know, but we're not in bullish territory either. We're kind of the near-term line is stuck in neutral, which is a very common theme uh, for the Russell 2000 right now is being stuck in neutral. In our options inventory class uh, that we have on Wednesdays, we've been actually killing it uh, this year. Uh, with IWM and for that matter with SPY too, but especially with IWM because it's been so sideways. We've been able to really bank off of that uh, sideways action uh, and take advantage of it. But as you can see again, just all across the board, strong bullish postures, um, near-term line dropping. The Dow's a different story. The Dow's got light pink shading and yellow line and we're down below 60 and we're not below 40. So we're not in intermediate pullback mode and, and this has the potential of being a very bullish pattern like we saw here. Um, you know, again, eventually the light pink shading and the yellow, a yellow line will turn into dark pink shading and a red line at some point in time. And that very well could be this go around because of how far down below the market sentiment line we already are. The market sentiment line is dropping below 80. It's falling. Uh, the short term sentiments have been down below 40 for multiple days now uh, in bearish territory, the near term line. So this has, you know, the, the, the opportunity, the chance of being a sign that uh, it might be uh, starting to roll over now. All right, before we look at some other charts, I invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Mouse over this icon here on the bottom right corner of your screen. Hit the red subscribe button that pops out. There's also one down below the video if you're watching us on YouTube. That will notify you when our videos are posted. Um, also, while you're down there, hit that thumbs up icon. That tells us that you liked the video today. And it also tells us that you want us to do another video again tomorrow. So if you like our videos, you like us to keep doing them, the way you let us know is by hitting that thumbs up. Uh, if you don't like our videos, of course, you don't have to click on anything. You don't even have to watch. Uh, but we do appreciate all those who do hit the thumbs up and like, uh, like our videos. Uh, also comment down there. What did you get out of the video today? What stood out to you? Uh, what questions or comments do you have about anything I discussed in the video? Post those in the comment section. And then reply to other people's comments as well. And let's keep this conversation going. Uh, join our website at marketscholars.com. There's a, a link popping out there in the top right corner of your screen. Click on that link to subscribe to our site for free. Follow me on Twitter for more content in between the videos from day to day. There's my handle right there, at DavidSettle42. And join our Market Outlook Facebook group that we've created.
All right, if you're watching us on YouTube, um, or on our website, excuse me, if you're on here on our blog post, uh, come over here on the right, click on that, uh, this icon right here, that takes you to our Market Outlook live videos. Uh, this is what it looks like here, as well as all the archives are posted. If you want to see the archives, click on, on this uh, link right there. It will play them for you. Um, those, are, those videos are where I review all the old trades that we do. Uh, we, the trades that we put on in these videos at the end, we continue to manage them until we get out of them. So that's where we manage them. Um, also, we have there are all these trades are examples of what we do in our trading rooms. Here's access to our trading rooms over here on the right. Um, so again, all of our subscribers, all of our paid subscribers get access to all those videos. Of course, our premium subscribers get access to all of it for less money uh, per month than our monthly subscribers do. And also in addition to that, you get access to all of our premium tools and resources, uh, as well as our class forums, uh, where you can be able to interact with other students uh, that also attend those classes. Come down here, click on this heart, it opens up a new tab. Uh, hit this uh, like button right there. Uh, come over here, hit that thumbs up icon. Also opens up a new tab. Uh, hit that like button as well. Again, uh, the more you do that, it really helps us out because it will reach our content will reach more of our followers because of the engagements it has. That's why we always ask for it. Uh, it also benefits you because Twitter and Facebook will promote content in your timelines from the accounts that you engage with the most. So we want you to engage with us. So we try to make it really easy for you to engage with us right here with just one or two really simple clicks while you're watching even. All right, let's get back to the charts here, and let's take a look at some of these other charts, uh, including we've talked about the DMI uh, for SPY. This is really the, the negative indicator actually dipped below 20 before bouncing up now, um, but the positive indicator can never really get below above 30. It's been kind of hovering above 25, hence its bullishness, but not bullish enough to get a good directional move going. That's why the ADX is... I mean, the ADX is about as low as it possibly had, that has been, right? And, you know, obviously that that really low ADX pumped a big bullish move. Over here, this low ADX also pumped a big bullish move that that prompted, you know, that, that got up and made that little rally there. If you look at other, you know, extreme lows here on the ADX, that prompted a, a bearish move uh, eventually by the time we rallied here. It finished the bullish move. And then prompted this big bearish run in the fourth quarter of 2018. This one uh, prompted a, the bullish move that ultimately peaked in the beginning of 2018. So getting, you know, getting it down to these really extreme near single-digit levels generally prompts a move in the ADX that ultimately ends with, you know, kind of a parabolic move, one way or the other. Uh, considering how long we've been bullish, that's a little bit concerning because we've already had the bullish move. Uh, so it's a little concerning that it might not be the move that we like uh, ultimately by the time the ADX peaks um, on this next particular peak. If you take a look at the RSI and the CCI, uh, you can see the break back down. So we're not bullish anymore. We're not above six. We're not bearish either. You know, we're not below 40. We're not below negative 100. So uh, we're not quite there yet. The Ichimoku trend, you know, we never did get above two. We never did get above 65. So we're rolling back down. Uh, if you take a look at like the diamonds, um, uh, you can see, you know, we were trying to get bullish there too, kind of flirting with the same levels, never did, and now we're at zero. Now we're just not bullish anymore at all, and we're below the blue line, and we're flirting with breaking into the Ichimoku cloud. Uh, SPY is a little bit above it. If you take a look at IWM, it's been so flat, right? We did get back up above the cloud. And you can see kind of peaking at these important levels too, it appears as of right now. In fact, we can drop still and still have that red line be above the price. Um, you know, what the, it kind of, again, goes to show that there's not a whole lot of support necessarily holding us up at these levels per se. Let's say, speaking of support, let's take a look at the volume support. Again, you see how top heavy we are. I mean, we are really, really close to that being the point of control. Um, which is actually above the current value area. And, and a lot of this volume is going to start tapering off here within the next expiration cycle or two. And we've talked about before, IWM is very top heavy. I mean, that is the point of control. And there is nothing, if we break the 23% retracement level on IWM, there is nothing holding it up to the downside. It's been a, with a very insanely significant resistance to the upside. So... If we do break this, it's going to be a while before it really gets going again um, on the way back up. Uh, so that's some very, very important, this little range 
uh, that IWM has been in. And of course, uh, looking at diamonds, it's kind of very similar. And remember, it actually is in its value area for the one year chart. And the point of control is way down here. Remember, the, when you are trading in the value area, the point of control acts as a center of gravity. So we were very, very close to the point of control actually being right here, as you can see. And this goes to show just how close they are. And in between them, uh, there's a pretty decent gap of volume. So again, an important level for even diamonds in terms of uh, if we break it, you know, how far down, I mean, at least coming down to 315, uh, back to these March, March levels would be the next significant uh, layer of um, support based on volume. So we take a look at the long term and then short term. If you take a look at the long term chart, uh, we've talked about these really, really small bodies. I mean, it's looking like the bodies are going to get really small now. Um, if you look at the Hakanyashi differential, which measures the size of those bodies there, uh, you can see where it's really dropping, um, potentially down towards, the, down towards, if not below zero, which is what transitions us towards a um, towards negative can red candles, which would be negative. Um, and you can see kind of if you're going to get an intermediate pullback, they, they tend to get relatively bigger sized on all of these. So it kind of gives you an idea of where we need to get to in order for it to actually be an intermediate pullback like we've seen on some of these. Uh, whereas some of these other smaller negatives weren't necessarily big enough to be considered uh, intermediate pullbacks here. On the flip side, if we take a look at the very short term uh, chart of SPY, again, this 415, very, very important level. Uh, the point of control here at 419 we're trading at 420 right now in the after hours uh, actually a little bit below that uh, if you look at the futures contract uh, the futures contracts down the 4191 so we're actually trading a little bit below the lows just a little bit uh, below the lows there so if you translate that to spy uh, we're trading right around this area here so we're trading right at that point of control that's going to be a very important level for us tomorrow uh, and into the end of the week to see if we hold that. Uh, you expect support to hold until it doesn't, and that would finish filling in that gap that we've covered before uh, from last Friday. Um, and then the next kind of gap that we haven't filled in yet would be uh, this bullish one over here. And if we're filling in that gap, we are we are moving down uh, to the downside because that's there's not a lot of volume in the lower half of this four week range. In fact. It's not even going to be a part of the four-week range here in a couple of days. By by the time we get through Friday here, you know these three, these all these days are going to be off. So today, of course, uh, being Wednesday, so um, you know once we get Wednesday, uh, Thursday, and Friday off, we'll get these two days off. So uh, we'll be right up here. So the low point will be the four-week low point will be right there. Um, if that's if that's where we get to, uh, our rune indicator. Here's where I wanted to look. That Arun indicator could very well give us a pretty bearish sign, uh, a bearish crossover if we end up closing uh, or getting down to the four week low um, by the beginning of next week. Let's take a look at the volume today and the trading range. You saw them pick up a little bit here. Let's go three green arrows. Volume at 80 million shares trading hands. The trading range also picked up. Um, we were at um, today five points five points and 80 million shares trading hands so that puts us right here uh, five points is right there uh, 80 million shares are right there both those levels are bearish because they're above they're above but they're not so extreme that they're off the charts that we bounce off of really quickly so as if we stay between 80 and 100 million shares trading hands and we stay between five and seven points on the range then those are bearish levels because those will just bring these lines up if we get to like a 10 point range or if we get to like 150 million shares trading, then those will be so extreme that those will be dips that will be bought. Um, and we've seen those before in some of these other levels. Um, so just kind of keep an eye if we are going to have any kind of weakness going into the weekend, which I actually expect here, uh, just keep an eye on how big. And then also keep an eye on too on how far we gap down if we gap down tomorrow. We've been gapping up for so many days in a row. That's what, 20? You know, like 20 some odd days out of 23 out of 26, I believe, uh, days that we've gapped to the upside uh, with, what, seven in a row. The the first one standard deviation is, move is only 0.65 points. So if we come down here uh, at 0.65 points, 0.64, if we gap that far down or lower, then that will kind of give you an idea of 
uh, whether or not that's a runaway gap, uh, a gap that starts an intermediate decline, especially if we end up closing down by 2 or 3% if it's over us. So we'll start us off with the gap and how big that gap can be. And again, just to kind of give you an idea, the futures contracts right now um, are trading down, uh, what, a half a percent. And keep in mind that that's actually uh, from the close of the futures contract was uh, is a little bit different than the close of the of the um, cash index. So uh, we'll kind of really closely watch to see uh, where we end up closing. Because again, like I said, SPY, you know, we're trading below the lows on SPY here. Um, on on the future, we're trading below today's lows. Well, that would be today's lows on SPY is at 419.92. So if we're actually trading in that range, about four, uh, four nineteen, let's say and a half, uh, if we're at that level and we close at four twenty two eleven, then that would be a uh, about a 062 percent gap to the downside. So it's going to be very close to watch. And right now we're in the Asian session. Uh, we'll see if Europe once Europe kicks in, if volume starts picking up, and we buy that low volume uh, drop. Uh, overnight drop or if it exacerbates it and we continue uh, into the US market with an even bigger decline. So it's gonna be very important early early this morning if you happen to be awake to see uh, what happens when Europe opens we get that second market open. The Asian markets typically buy themselves very low very low volume. Asian and Europe is still low relatively speaking but not nearly as low whenever it's just Asia that's open. Uh, so we'll keep so we'll see how how it responds and see whether we uh, exacerbate. If we open up down 1% and then we just run from the open uh, lower, then all the characteristics of a runaway gap. More than likely, that's not going to be the case. But if it is, then we know, you know, you know that's, a, that's a sign. And then when you add that to what volatility may be doing, uh, today volatility ramped up and closed near, near its high. Or at least it closed uh, around 18 Right in the sweet spot. So, you know, again, in terms of potential of where, how far up this can go before we get to an intermediate pullback mode, that's all still a very, very long way. So that's why I don't think necessarily that we're starting the intermediate pullback. It's still a very noisy period. Uh, we have a long ways to go before it's not, before it's anything more than noise uh, on the S&P 500. But We'll see if uh, if we start working our way in that direction or if today was just, which I actually expect, I think it will take some time, but I expect that we are working our way in that direction uh, or if it ends up just being a little bit of, a little much to do about nothing um, uh, from today's FOMC meeting reaction. So what do you think? Do you agree with that assessment? Do you disagree? Uh, let me know in the comment section below, especially if you disagree. Uh, what charts or indicators are you looking at that suggest why you're a lot more bearish than I am already? Or if you uh, even more, you, you think we've already had our exhale and we're, uh, this is just a short blip and we're already um, on a new run higher and we're just going to continue pushing the new high. So if you got something that's kind of dictating that perspective for you, uh, share it with the other viewers down in the comment section below. All right, now let's take a look at what's driving the price action. You can see coming into it what's really been the biggest movers over the last three months. Uh, the inflation trade, right? And bonds have started to pick up a little bit, um, but it was weak bonds. It's been bullish real estate, bullish commodities, bullish gold. Uh, they're starting to get back a little bit here. Um, developed market equities have been strong, uh, outpacing emerging markets. Uh, the Qs and SPY has been very strong relative to the small cap index, which has been bearish. And you can see the dollar starting to strengthen. We'll take a look at that chart here in just a second. Let's take a look at how things are performing here this week, just this week alone, and then you can see the weakness. So look at that dollar breaking out today. Uh, after the Qs had a really decent week, despite some very big weakness in IWM, relatively speaking, of course, big divergence there that uh, now we're starting to move uh, a little bit lower. IWM did come off of its lows better. Uh, Qs uh, finished uh, close to the break even. And if you take a look at just today alone, you can see how going into the FOMC, uh, commodities are up, real estate was up, bonds are up. Coming out of the FOMC, emerging markets were down, gold was down. Why? Because the dollar was so strong. Uh, bonds were down, which is interesting because even with safety, uh, with safety being the, the, 
Um, the trade du jour, gold and bonds were both down uh, during a sell-off, uh, which is interesting. It kind of shows how maybe how safety, how safe haven those uh, particular uh, asset classes may be right now. Uh, but the biggest move, of course, was um, the U.S. dollar. And let's take a look at that Euro U.S. dollar chart, the one that we've been paying so close attention to. Uh, trying to get back above that 23% retracement level and really get going, but unable to really extend. Every time we went up, we'd come back down to it. Every time we'd go up, we'd come back down. We never could extend away from it and really solidify the breakout. And then, boom, look at that move today. Just breaking down below all these lows, breaking down below the 38% retracement again. Dark pink shading in a red line again, breaking below 40 in the intermediate Levels so of breaking into bearish territory, extreme lows in the short term sediment. That's actually this line. You have to, this is the current candle for, for tonight. So, this is the one that closed. Oversold near term line, extremely oversold momentum line. So, things are really turning uh, south uh, for uh, the pair. If you look at the Hakanyashi uh, candles, especially for the weekly chart, if I can spell it right. There we go. So you can see the bearishness of that candle. In fact, uh, when you look at it again with the Hakanyashi differential, which measures the size of uh, the bearish candles, um, so you can get some perspective on whether or not we are actually uh, turning lower. Uh, you can see where the the bearish moves occur. You know, with how how big to the down, how how far down below zero, how far above zero we get to actually get a good trend going. That's a pretty decent distance below zero if this candle ends up holding by the end of the week. Um, a very decent sign that we are st starting a new uh, intermediate decline. Uh, and definitely a new trend, a uh, new bearish trend to the downside with, with the uh, PPO also rolling over here. So bullish, that's bullish for the dollar. I don't expect that to be a long-term trend, uh, but in the short term, um, you know, I do expect that with any kind of risk aversion trade uh, larger risk aversion trade with as you can see the dollar right now is the main um, safety trade right uh, safety trades you can see yield here let's go to the long term the longest term bonds here uh, as you can see here uh, we had turned positive we have some positive candles and we're st we're moving our way up even if like today we weren't really it wasn't really a huge rally despite the bullishness in stocks but we are setting up for a, you know, the posture is still strongly bullish. We are setting up for a bullish near-term low, a much higher low with a near-term line between 20 and 50. So there's an opportunity for bond long-term loss. So this is not the 10-year yield. This is even longer than that. It, the, the yields that went up today weren't the all across the yield spread. It was just in the middle. Um, the long-term bonds, which is more economic growth expectations, um, the, the yields for those were flat. Uh, the short-term bonds were also flat because there's no no chance they're going to raise rates anytime soon. It was just the middle where it's kind of, you know, they, they do expect the Fed to be more restrictive, but just not anytime soon. That's why there was a big kind of hump in the middle of the yield spread. And so so the, the long-term, the longest-term bonds can still act as a safe haven, um, you know, coming off of this near-term low if that ends up being the case. Gold, on the other hand, it might pace equ outpace equities, but look at that drop there. That's a that's a pretty significant drop that suggests that gold is on its way towards on an absolute level relative to the dollar, because that's what this is priced in, right? So this this ETF compares gold to the dollar. Um, you know, you would expect some weakness if we take a look at gold instead of to the dollar, uh, compare gold to stock prices. So like the S and P five hundred. And you can see this is on the daily chart. It was down today. It had been bullish. Um, and now the question is whether or not we're going to actually set a new low point here and bounce up off of this or if we are now going to be bearish on gold. See, when you actually break down here, that's actually a bullish sign. You can see the, the whole time we've been bullish, gold's been underperforming um, stock prices. Uh, even if gold has actually been bullish itself, if you look at against the dollar uh, here, um, come back out to five year chart. You can see uh, pretty much since um, beginning of or the end of 2018, uh, we've been in this bear market. I mean, gold's been on a really good run. But if you look at it relative to stock prices uh, from the, let's go out like say five years, 
uh, from the end uh, the uh, end of 2018 to the COVID low point, you can see there's been spurts of bullishness in gold versus bonds during this bear market that we've been in. But there's also been really good runs with gold underperforming stocks. And we've been on that now. And it appears that we're kind of trying to set the low point here uh, with a little bit of a rally uh, on the long-term PPO setting up for uh, this uh, oscillator to reverse from extreme highs uh, to extreme lows and then back uh, back up again off of these uh, strong low points off the RSI and the CCI coming off of kind of a breakthrough on these indicators um, in the case of the MACD also getting above zero uh, for the first time in a while. So, so there's an opportunity for gold maybe not to outperform the dollar uh, in the short term on the kind of risk offness. Uh, but there is an opportunity here for gold to outpace stocks, as we've seen in the past that it can do uh, in cases of uh, intermediate declines, if not longer uh, intermediate declines. So you had the fourth quarter of 2018, the intermediate pullback in 2019, the COVID low point in 2020. But another sign that we were have been in a bull market or bear market, excuse me, from that fall of 2018 to the COVID low that was a bear market in risk appetite, just masked by these really large mega cap tech stocks, which have um, diverged so much from the rest of the S and P 500 that they've um, that they you know the S and P as a whole didn't reflect uh, the risk aversion that we saw in other asset classes. Let's take a look at some of those sectors now, some of those behemoth sectors, and see how they perform today. So let's go to this chart first, and we'll take a look at just today alone. 616. There we go. So you can see going into the FOMC meeting, real estate doing well, healthcare doing well, kind of a energy was up off of its lows. Uh, financials were, you know, kind of at lows of the day. They were the biggest losers going into the meeting. They had the biggest move jump up uh, post FOMC. Uh, finished today with a very small loss. Discretionary also jumped up on this bounce up. Um, and the rest of you can see, look at utilities really lagging behind real estate, really lagging behind uh, staples, materials, uh, industrials. Some of those previously big winners are struggling, uh, energy even uh, struggling a little bit. So let's take a look at the 12 grid now and keep in mind that a lot of these are trading at the lows of the day and the um, pre-market and the overnight trading. So you can see materials and industrials are turning dark pink shading in a red line. So they are turning bearish. Staples looks like it will turn bearish. Utilities, real estate is coming back. Looks like it's breaking back towards, at least towards a moving average. Uh, discretionary is trying to see whether or not it's, it wants to roll over. If it does, it will be right back to dark pink shading because you're already below 50 uh, and you'd be back to a red line because it's already falling. So uh, it kind of shows just how tenuous things are. The financials trying to figure out whether this light pink shading yellow line will turn into a bullish bounce or not. Uh, technology discretionary or communication services. We talked about that cluster uh, as you know being more of a bearish cluster than an overbought cluster. Uh, and then of course uh, technology uh, looking like it's kind of double or hitting a resistance and rolling over back towards its moving average. So uh, from all across the board, things aren't looking in, in real estate as hot as it was uh, rolling over. So all across the board, things aren't looking uh, nearly as bullish. Uh, as what maybe the broader market posture may seem to be. All right, so for our trade idea of the day, uh, I wanted to take a look at Occidental Petroleum. Uh, Occidental is one, is, is one of the stocks that actually looked pretty bullish. I mean, it actually got an overbought cluster, which you know at the end of a run can be bearish. At the beginning of an intermediate rally, right when you cross above 80, it's actually pretty bullish. Obviously, nothing's 100%, and we don't have to worry about earnings, you can see, going into July expiration. Uh, but dark green shading and a green line, good short-term sentiment move. You take a look at uh, all these different oscillators that we look at in support of the market forecast. You're getting a di near directional move here, almost above 30, well below 20 on the positive. So the ADX is starting to rise there. Um, the RSI and the CCI are showing bullish breakout moves, well above 60, above 100, coming off of that positive 200 break. Uh, to kind of start the bullish run. Um, you look at the uh, Bollinger Bands. The Bollinger Bands are kind of pushing up to the upper quartile of the band again, well above the value area, well above the 23% retracement level again, all, above all these previous highs during the, the pullback 
uh, and there's very little volume uh, resistance above us here. Um, the path of least resistance is to the upside. As you can see uh, from a Ichimoku cloud, we are well above 65 and two. So we are in we are in an intermediate run and we're getting to the point where it's almost entrenched. We're above 80 and almost above five. That's very, very strong uh, levels and obviously well above the cloud too and the green lines pulling away from the blue. So bullish patterns across the board, despite the weakness and you know the, the, the what the rest of the market looks like, sets us up for a trade idea. Uh, in this case, a sell a bull put spread. So selling the mid 30s delta, selling the 29, buying the 27. Um, that bull put spread there. Um, you can see um, we put that in during the market outlook live. Um, but it puts there, there's our, our trade uh, again going into July expiration. So it doesn't have to go up. As long as it stays up above these levels, right? That's kind of the idea there. So if you look at where the break even is, set slice to the break even and then set slice to the chart. You know, again, as long as it stays above these lows that we just barely set, then we're good to go. If you look at it on the short term chart here, uh, it doesn't have to go up. Remember, it just has to stay above all of these levels. You can go, and of course, if it breaks down below these levels, we're going to be getting, you know, it's, we're going to, it's going to trigger our loss. We'll take a small loss and it will move on. Uh, as you can see, it's got it can fall pretty quickly, but you know, considering how sideways we were and the breakout today, even you know, it, it never really did drop very much uh, post FOMC. A little bit uh, that was actually pre FOMC. It never did really drop post FOMC. You know, there's a good potential uh, for this to continue to move higher. So we'll see if it follows through with this quote unquote breakout um, and whether or not we can uh, make it work with our short put vertical spread. All right, so that wraps us up for today. You've heard from me now. Now I want to hear from you. Use that link popping out in the top right corner of your screen. Uh, that takes you to our Market Outlook forums on our website. All of our subscribers, even our free subscribers, have access to that particular forum. So open up any new threads, reply to other people's threads. And like I said before, let's keep this conversation going in between videos. As always, thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up icon and like us on Twitter and Facebook too. And comment on the video. Have a great rest of your Wednesday night, everybody, and we'll see you all next time.